Hello all, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create some cool effects on your text and your images using one of Photoshop's most untouched blending modes. But before we do that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I put out content like this every Friday so that you can become a better designer and use Photoshop more efficiently. All right, let's get started. So the blend mode I'm referring to is the dissolve blend mode. Many people have never even touched that or maybe they've used it by accident, but basically it is one of the first two blending modes which means it's one of the normal modes which is pretty odd because it's actually ridiculously weird and it's why many designers have never even touched this blend mode but i do want to show you some uses and implications for it such as getting really cool noisy effects on your text and on your images so here's an example of some stuff you can make just using the dissolve blend mode and some other tricks that i found out with it you can see we get this really cool grainy blurred text and we got this cool pixelated image treatment for this image and you can play around with the size and the, the look of this grain and the noise. So how does dissolve work? It basically stochastically dithers your uh, layer according to its transparency channel. And since that is kind of word vomit, I'm just going to show you what I mean. So let's say I have this new layer here. Let's say I use a, a soft brush and I paint just a few dots here. And if I hide the background, you can clearly see that these are transparent. So when we go back to our layer and we change it to dissolve, we can see that it kind of, it looks like a bitmapping. It, um, it kind of recreates that transparency through dithering, through noise. So the main attraction of, of dissolve is that it tries to display this kind of transparency or any transparency in terms of sort of a stochastic noise pattern. So I have this example image here and you'll see if I set this to dissolve, Nothing's gonna immediately happen to this image. It's just gonna stay the same, and that is because we don't have any transparency channel on this. But the moment you start to introduce attributes of transparency, such as changing the opacity, we can see that it dithers this layer into this noise pattern. But this looks like shit. So how do we use this in a way that actually looks good with our image and our text, and we can actually use it in a design and be happy with it? So let's see how we can make this look good on our image. First off, we're going to need to introduce a transparency channel for this that is fitting to our background. So since I'm on a white background, I'm going to want to remove all the pretty much white parts from this image. And I can do that by going into the blending options of the layer. So if I double click this layer, it brings up this dialog and down here, there is the blend if gray option. What you're going to want to do if you're on a white background, if you're on a black background, this would be the reverse. But since I'm on a white background, I'm going to take this slider right here, I'm gonna hold Alt, I'm gonna click it, and that's gonna split it into two. I'm gonna drag the left end part of it all the way down here. And that is gonna give us the transparency we desire on our image. So I press OK on this, and I turn off the background. You can see that we now have a transparency channel for this image. For some reason though, the dissolve blend mode still isn't working. And that is because we need a buffer between the layer effects of this layer and the dissolve blend mode. So we could do that by putting it in a group. So I'm gonna change this back to normal blend mode. And then I'm gonna press Command G on my keyboard. And I'm gonna change the group blending mode to dissolve. And now we can see that it works. The dissolve blend mode is turning this transparency channel of the image into this stochastic dithered noise pattern. Now there's actually still vestiges of the gray tones that we had in that image if you really zoom in here. So I'm gonna zoom out again and I'm just gonna introduce a color overlay onto the layer styles of the group i'm gonna just make it black and now all of the values in this is black and that just makes the whole thing more cohesive and easier for us to work with one problem with this though the biggest problem is that you'll probably notice if you've ever used this blending mode before if you're just experimenting with it is that it doesn't always look how it really looks and that is because photoshop compositing is changing the way that we see it and the only way to see what it actually looks like with the information the layer actually contains is by zooming in a ton and really inspecting it. And we can see that these dots are just really, really tiny, far too tiny actually. So if we were gonna send this to print, let's say, screen print for example, these dots would just be way too tiny to come out this nicely on a screen print. And even for digital use, this would get pretty much obliterated by whatever compression is hitting it. So we don't really want dots or noise this small. The reason these dots are so tiny is because we are working in a 300 DPI document, or at least you should be. You should always be working 
in a very high DPI document. I always work in 300, and especially if you're doing stuff for print. It just allows you to work in higher resolution with more quality in your designs. Sorry if you hear that fucking bird chirping outside, but anyway, the way we could fix this really small dot size is obviously by changing the DPI. So if I were to go into image and then image size here, and I was to change this DPI to say something like 50, and then I zoom in here, you can see that these dots are way bigger than they are on my 300 DPI document. And so the smaller I make this resolution, the bigger the dots are gonna get. So that's the solution for it, but we don't wanna change our DPI in this parent document we have right here because we wanna work in a 300 DPI document. So how do we fix this? It is by the use of smart objects. So if we turn this group of layers here into a smart object, we can then change the DPI inside of that smart object, and then we can have these bigger dots appear on our 300 DPI canvas. But to do that, we're gonna to need to make another buffer for this. So go ahead and put this in another group, and then you're gonna turn this parent group into a smart object. Cool, so now we can open up this smart object, and from here we can go into image, image size, and change the DPI to whatever I wish. So I'm gonna choose something like 60, just for that really blown out effect. Just make sure the resample is on nearest neighbor. I'm gonna press OK. Now we can see how blown out this kind of noise effect is, and it looks cool. But if you save this smart object and go back into the original document, you can see that we don't have the same effect going on here. It's not as harsh and pixelated. And that is because we can't change, for some reason, the resampling method from a small object to its parent document. So when this, I think it's 60 DPI document, is being upscaled to this 300 DPI document, is not using the nearest neighbor resampling method. I believe it's using bicubic or whatever. So we get these kind of blurry edges on our pixels here. But there is of course a way to fix this. It's just gonna take some rasterizing. So if you go in here and you go to this parent group over here and you press command E to merge the group, we now have this as a raster. So now we can go back to image size and change this back to 300. Again, just make sure the resample is on nearest neighbor or else we'll end up with what we saw in the parent document just before with these blurred edges, which could be a cool effect if you want it, especially if you threshold it. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it with the harsh pixels. I'm gonna press okay, and then I'm gonna save this, and we can see that change take place in our parent document, and we have those harsh pixelated edges on our really noisy image here. Of course, this also works to make some pretty cool blurred out noisy text effects as you saw earlier in the video where I displayed this kind of effect going on here. So once you get your text ready, go ahead and make it a smart object just by right clicking and converting it to a smart object. I'm going to add some blurs on this. You can choose whatever you want. My personal preference is just to use a field blur and then we'll do one point up top here and one down here at the bottom and turn the blur up a bit and that gets us that kind of gradient blur effect and I really like it so I'm gonna press okay. So now we've got a really fun blurred text. I'm going to set this to dissolve and then I'm going to put this in a group by pressing command G on my keyboard. Then all we have to do is turn this group into a smart object. So right click and convert to smart object. And then we're going to head into the smart object by double clicking the thumbnail. And once we're in here, the first thing we're actually going to want to do this time is rasterize this text. Just because when you lower the DPI down, the blur that you put on this text is not going to scale proportionally down. So just go ahead and rasterize this layer. So go and right click and rasterize it. And now we can go to image size. And we can change this to whatever number we want. So I'll choose, let's say 50 for that really exaggerated effect. Press okay. And again, we could save this as it is. And we'll see that the change that makes in the parent document is kind of this blurry effect. And if we really wanted to, we can threshold this. And it's still a very cool and modular effect, but I actually like that a lot. But um, if you want the hard edges and the pixelated feel that we had in this document, again, all you have to do is merge this group back. So go to the group and press Command E, and then we'll go to image size and change the resolution up to 300 again with the resample on nearest neighbor. So okay, we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our parent document and we can see we get that pixelated dissolved effect on our text. And it's just a really cool look. And that's pretty much the effect. You can add colors to this and whatnot with a color overlay and do whatever adjustments you want to your text. But that is the gist of it. And before I end the video, I actually want to mention that I have a ton of 
free design assets on my site for you to download. And I figured uh, I'm always adding stuff to this and I might just make an action that does something like this to either your text or to your photos and I can put it on my site. And if you wanna download these freebies, all you have to do is go to my site, go to this freebies section, view all, and just click this and it will redirect you to the bottom of the page where you can put in your email and it will send you an email with all of these design assets for you to download. Like I said, free of charge, it's on the house. So definitely go do that if you need some more tools in your library. And that's really it. I hope you learned something. This was a really fun tutorial to make. Definitely subscribe and hit that like button for more and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.